It's John Bowden from Rock History Book, and welcome to Today in History from August 16th. What an incredible day in history it is. If you were born on this day, you're not alone as far as stuff happening. More than, well, we lost the king of rock and roll, the queen of soul. I mean, that's a lot. That's more than most days. That's more than any day. So there you go. We're going to go into it. If you want to support the channel, remember, we're trying to raise funds for a new computer. We have so many people who helped us and we're this far away. So if you can donate, please do. There's PayPal links in the description of this video and you can join our Patreon as well. Today in rock music history, August 16th in 1945, Gary Luizio from the rock band American Breed, who by the way scored a 1967 number five single, Ben Me Shake Me, was born on this day. He died at 70 years old on January 16th, 2016. In 1946, Gordon Fleet, drummer for the Easy Beats, is born in Merseyside, England. He's 76 years old. 1948, Barry Hay is born, Dutch singer, guitarist, flute and saxophone player for Golden Earring. Remember Radar Love? He's born in India and he's 73 years old. Bill Sputnik Spooner from the band The Tubes. Talk to you later, remember? She's a beauty. Born in Phoenix, Arizona, he's 72 years old. And in 1949, Scott Ashton, drummer for The Stooges, is born in Washington. He died in March 2014, he was 64 years old. One of my favorite singers from the 80s was born on this day, 1953. James J.T. Taylor, he put the J.T. in there because there's another James Taylor out there. American R&B singer for Cool and the Gang. Remember Ladies Night Celebration, Joanna? He was born in South Carolina. He's 68 years old today. He was with Cool and the Gang for nine years, their most prolific time from 79 to 88. Then he came back from 95 to 99 and then did a stint in 2018. Such a great singer. 1957, Tim Ferriss of the Australian rock band In Excess was born in Perth, Australia. He's 64 years old. This is kind of a big one, 1958. I always knew she was a little older than me by two years. Madonna Sison, American singer, actress, actress, like a virgin, one of her biggest songs. She was born in Michigan. A birthday for Vanessa Carlton today, born in 1980, born in Milford, Pennsylvania. Dee -dee 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 -dee. And Elvis Presley died on this day, in 1977, when I went into the kitchen and asked my mom what was wrong, she seemed weepy. She said Elvis died and this is the ignorance that I had when I was a 17 year old. And I've regretted it ever since because I was knee deep in rock. I said, who cares? And the second I said it out loud, I remember thinking, you're an idiot. How dare you be so disrespectful and ignorant. And I apologized to my mom. I knew I'd done something wrong. But I apologize to Elvis in my own mind. It was that day, this day in history in 77, that I started educating myself into Elvis. Of course I knew the songs, but he wasn't hip to me. But he was one of the hippest, most important figures in rock and roll history. The King of Rock and Roll died in Graceland. He was 42 years old and it really didn't have to happen. But we know the stories of excess, passed away of cardiac arrhythmia. And it's estimated he has sold more than any other artist in history with 1 billion record sales worldwide. Elvis had 23 studio albums, live albums, eight compilations, 13 EPs, 29. There were a lot of movies that he did, of course. He was an actor. Soundtrack albums, 18. There was so many box sets, 30. Posthumous compilations, 115. And remix albums, there were 11. Elvis Presley had 117 singles and 25 after his death. The number ones included Heartbreak Hotel, I Want You, I Need You, I Love You, Don't Be Cruel, Hound Dog, Love Me Tender, All Shook Up, Teddy Bear, It's Now or Never, Are You Lonesome Tonight, Suspicious Minds, and there's a few we missed in there. He will always be remembered. Also died on this date in 1995, Robert Bobby DeBarge, one of the singers from the R&B group Switch. He was the main singer in that band. He died at 39 from AIDS complications. Guitarist Alan Caddy of the Tornadoes dies at the age of 60 after a battle with alcoholism. And the Queen of Soul passed away on this date in 2018. One of the greatest voices that ever lived on this planet. And a huge body of work, so many compilations, so many duets. She was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987 and she died of pancreatic cancer at the age of 76. We will never forget Aretha. 
In songs and albums in 1961, Patsy Cline recorded one of the most iconic songs of all time, The Ballad, which was composed by Willie Nelson, Crazy, which gave her a number two country hit in 1962. The same year, Peter, Paul and Mary release If I Had a Hammer, another iconic song. Little Stevie Wonder's first single is released, I Call It Pretty Music, but old people call it the blues. And in 1966, the Monkees released their first single, Last Train to Clarksville. The year 1967, on this date, Louis Armstrong, after playing a midnight show at the Tropicana in Vegas, goes to United Recording Studios to record one of his most iconic songs. I used to close my radio show with it in the 80s. What a wonderful world. The session ended at 6 a.m. in the morning. And in 69, Eric Clapton and the supergroup Blind Faith released their only album, their self-titled album. In 1979, I had just graduated when this song became a hit, My Sharona by The Knack. It was awarded a gold record for selling one million copies. Doug Feger, who was the lead singer, said he was only 25 when he met a 17-year-old Sharona Alperin, that's her picture there, which inspired the song. It was this day in 1985 that the Red Hot Chili Peppers released their debut album, Freaky Styly. In 1986, Madonna's Papa Don't Preach goes number one from her album True Blue. The following year, Bon Jovi released their third album, Slippery When Wet, which was Billboard Magazine's top-selling album of 1987. 94, Bare Naked Ladies released their second album, Maybe You Should Drive. And in 2000, Lifehouse released Hang Em By A Moment, the Billboard Song of the Year in 2001. In events in rock and roll, in 1957, Buddy Holly and the Crickets play their first show of six nights at Harlem's Apollo Theater. In 1962, Ringo Starr replaces Pete Best as the Beatles drummer, first official concert two days later. 1968, the Jackson 5 play their first concert, opening for Diana Ross and the Supremes at the Forum in Los Angeles. In 1968, Bruce Springsteen's new band, Earth, made their live debut at the off Broad Street Coffee House at Red Bank, New Jersey. Admission was 75 cents. In 1974, the Ramones make their concert debut in New York City at CBGB's. On this day in 1975, singer Peter Gabriel announces his departure from the group Genesis. 1980, Bill Ward quits Black Sabbath, and on the same day, Jules Holland quits the band Squeeze. Also this day in history, Rick Allen, drummer for Def Leppard, made his first live appearance since losing his arm in a car accident. They appeared at the Monsters of Rock Festival in England. 1995, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys performs a concert with his daughters for the first time, Carney and Wendy, which everyone knew from Wilson Phillip. That is Today in History. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a lot of work every day to put this together, but it's a labor of love. We really enjoy doing it. If you want to support the channel to make sure this feature continues, there's a PayPal link in the description or you can join our Patreon. Make sure you share this video. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. It's for you. If you know someone who was born on the 16th, share it on their timeline. Like our videos and subscribe to our channel. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Book. Take care of yourself.